Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. I'm gonna take a break from my discussion on trading psychology to give you my mid-year update. What I learned and what I'm gonna do for the rest of the year. We'll get back to psychology really soon. On Monday, I woke up really early. I wake up really early every day, but on Monday, I woke up and started working on my slides for this presentation. And at the end of the day, I felt pretty good because I worked really hard on a presentation. But then I woke up this morning and thought, what did I do? It's like, well, I just put together a bunch of spreadsheets. I know, you probably want to party with me. But then I got to thinking, it's like, that's going to be pretty boring. But what's in them is actually pretty exciting. And if you could follow along, I think you'll do just fine in bull markets and in bear markets. So I decided to add a couple of graphs to this to show you what happened. So we came in to this slide heavily long and on the 19th when the market topped of february we had eight longs l is long s is short and two shorts and i'm going to walk you through this in just one second and then unfortunately as the market began to slide just a little bit and at that point it looked like it was just kind of pulling back just a normal day in fact kind of healthy for the market right we got knocked out of one of the shorts and then if you just take a look at the animations here you can see on these subsequent days we got knocked out of more and more longs and became more and more short as the trend to the downside developed and as the trend to the upside developed we became less short and more long now i thought it'd be kind of cool to graph this i know you probably want to party with me i, I hear you to show you what it would look like. So a long is plus one, and that's exactly how I represented it in the spreadsheet, and a short is minus one. So you can see up near the peak, we had plus seven, meaning that we're more long than short. And then down here at the bottom, you could see we had all shorts and no longs, or minus five total. And then you could see over here on the right side of the chart, and by the way, if you find a broker that lets you trade off the left side of the chart, please let me know. You could see that we were once again all along. Now, if you look back to February 19th at the top of the market, you could see that you could draw a big blue arrow on the chart. So this was published on February 19th, 2020, and this was a service for the following day, 2020. And you could see we still had a couple of shorts in here left over in the portfolio, even though the market was at all time highs. And we were heavily long, and that's because the market was what? Going up, right? And then mostly long side profits make up this $19,000 number. Now, this is a hypothetical $100,000 account, although I do take these exact trades. The way I report it is on a mechanical basis, just so people can follow along with the methodology. And this is straight from my trading service. Now, if we go to the 19th, again, and if you notice the white in here, these are partial profits. And we're looking for a 1% total gain on one side of the trade so 100k accounts which which this is based on you would take profits when you're up a thousand dollars when you're up two thousand dollars total you take a thousand dollars profit and you take half the shares off the table now go in and watch the money management show or if you really want to get into money management you really want to party like a rock star right go in and take the money management course on my website and we scale out because we don't know whether or not the longer term trend is going to develop in our positions and if they do holding on to half of the positions is still enough to make a lot of money should that trend begin to materialize so we go to february 21st you can see market beginning to pull back in here but so far it looks like just that a pullback and if you've been following along at home you know that i am a pullback player so i was still pretty excited about this market now ironically as i said a second ago we got stopped out of one of our shorts and what kind of sucks here and i know it happens spelled with a silent s sh but this stock dropped about 30 percent with the overall market which also dropped 30 percent as you know 
And that would have been nice to be, able, to be able to hold on to that short throughout the slide. So isn't that ironic, don't you think? We get knocked out of a short right before the market begins to implode. Then we have a gap in the market. And then notice this big slide in here. And at this point, you're probably thinking, row, row. So we take a look at the portfolio. And this is on 225. And as you can see, we got knocked out. One of our longs. This is the first long to go. And we made 13.53, which is better than a poke in the eye, about 1.3% on that position. So market continues to implode. At this part point, you're probably thinking, mother, father, looking pretty ugly. How's that for an oxymoron from a trend following moron? Now, one thing that fascinated me, and these indicators will be available soon, I promise is that the market took out the buy line, which is 10% below the 50-week closing high, and it, and it also closed below the 50-week moving average. That's a simple moving average. Now, if you've been following along, you know that any time a market's more than 10% away from its 50-week closing high and closes below the 50-week moving average, that signals a TFM 10% sell signal. Now, what fascinated me, and I know you probably still want to party with me, right, is that we got this weekly signal before we even had daily sell signals. And that was kind of a strange thing. I've never seen that happen in the last 20-something years that I've been doing this. Now, if we take a look at a portfolio, what happened? So on 228, last day of February, last trading day of February, we got knocked out of one, two, three, so the market was doing some serious pruning on our portfolio. And the good news is, net-net, we still did okay profit-wise, even though we did have one losing trade in there. So now the market begins to retrace. And this is a daily setup I call a first thrust. And that's when you have a sharp move lower, followed by a bit of a pullback. So... If you look on the 3-3 three, three service, we have one leftover short, which was from the last slide, and it's beginning to work nicely in here, starting to help out a little bit. And now let's take a look at the new setups. On the bottom here, we have a couple of new stocks setting up on the short side and no longs. And that makes a lot of sense because the overall market is set up to drop on the short side. So... If we take a look at the market on the 5th of March, we also have a bow tie, which just triggered. And that's just the moving averages coming together. Again, see prior shows for more on that. And you can see the market pulls back a little bit in here and then triggers that sell signal. So now we have daily sell signals triggering, which again is strange because the weekly signals already triggered. Now we take a look at the portfolio and we can see that our leftover short is still doing pretty good and our new short in here triggered. Not doing much yet, flat on the day, down $4. But now we have another short in the portfolio. So we got two shorts and three longs left in the portfolio. And once again, we have more shorts as setups. That's what the database is providing. All shorts and no longs. Now, as you can see, the market continues to slide. This is on March 9th. And when we take a look at the portfolio and the service for the 10th, we see that we got taken out of another couple of longs. Now, the short position is still doing pretty good, up 26.66 on the remainder. But obviously, this new little long, or the newer long that we have in here, got taken out for a complete 2% loss. And this existing long, this other existing long in here got taken out for about a $1,500 gain. But once again, we have more shorts triggered. And what's interesting is that BLDR has already hit the initial profit target for a thousand bucks. So that's pretty good. So you kinda, I know it's spreadsheets. I know it's, it's hard to get excited about this. 
But I think you can kind of see where I'm going here. It's like, yeah, you're giving up some of those open profits on longs, but what's happening? You're starting to put more and more shorts on and those shorts are beginning to work. And you're beginning to keep your head while everybody else is losing theirs and you're actually making money. People usually call me up or more, more accurately call my wife up. How's Dave doing? It's like, well, Dave's doing okay because Dave will short the market. Not to be smug because I do lose plenty enough money in the markets. But you can see the market continues to slide on the 12th of March. And then what happened then? Well, we got knocked out of our last little long. And believe me, I'm not happy to make money on the short side. I'd rather just be long, right? But I have to do what I have to do as a trader. And look, I gave up a lot of long side profits too. So I'm not completely okay, but I am navigating the waters. And notice that we have no setups. And this is kind of hard sometimes to come in and not have any setups. And I could tell that people are more interested in action than they are making money because when I don't show setups, I lose clients, but if I show some stinkers, even though they lost money, right, I don't lose nearly as many clients. And there's long, I have many other stories involving that. But before I digress too far, we go to the 18th, and you can see that we are 100% short, or all the shorts, the portfolio is all shorts, I should say. And all three of these shorts hit the initial profit target. The way the entry worked on AMD didn't quite get that full 1%, but that's not where the real money is. The real money is in the second low. And notice I wrote down here, sit on the dock. It's better to be sitting on the dock, drinking beer, wishing you were out to sea, than out to sea, wishing you were on the dock. I've been in a low pressure system about 100 miles offshore off the coast of Texas and wasn't sure if I was going to live because <laughs> I had nothing left to throw up. And another time, the weather wasn't quite as bad. In fact, it was a story night. It wasn't bad at all. But the boat was beginning to sink and the captain woke up and he's like, guys, guys, there's a lot of water down here. He's up to his ankles in water. And we were about three or 400 miles off the coast of Bermuda. And I really thought that we were going down. But luckily, we survived. We also won the race. But that was one of those times where I wish I was on the dock drinking beer. So the point is, it's better not to put capital in the harm's way than to put capital in the harm's way and lose money. It's that little FOMO that you might have or that little thing where you want to try to get some action, you just need to squelch that sometimes and then follow along what the database is telling you to do. What you can see on this day here on the 5th, we did start to get some new setups setting up in the bottom here. And then we had a short stop out in the portfolio. Now on the last day of March, we had three new potential shorts and the portfolio had three shorts in it. Now those two shorts, if you fast forward to the seventh, they failed miserably, okay? Dropped a few F-bombs on those two. Now here's the thing, I thought for sure, now I was listening to the database and I was following my setups, I wasn't confusing the issue with facts, but deep down I thought for sure a brick and mortar retail stock and a company which, you know, you're a kid, you're like, don't talk to strangers. And then the internet comes along. Don't talk to strangers on the internet. You know, don't get in somebody's car. Well, now you talk to a stranger on the internet and then you get in your car, right? It's like, who in the hell is going to get in somebody's car with this COVID-19 thing going along? But I was wrong on that and failed miserably. I know, first trader guy <laughs> ever to get up and show where he can occasionally be wrong. Believe me, I'm wrong a lot. So on the 13th, we could see that the market had start, started to work its way higher. Notice that the bowtie av moving averages are beginning to come together and have positive slope to them. And I'll have more to say about that when I talk about the indicators. And then we have three shorts left in the portfolio. Not bad profits at all there. 
And then we have a new short setting up, and that's on the 13th of April. Now, fast forward to April 29th, and you can see our old short, which has been in a portfolio forever, stopped out. Now, I'm slotted as a swing trader, but as you can see, this trade was initiated way back last fall, and we were able to ride it out for a 45.98% gain on the trend following part of the trade. And that's where the real money is, is in the trend following part of the trade. And you can see that short on the bottom there, our newest short, is beginning to fail miserably, which set up on the 9th. Now, it continues to fail, and as you can see, on the 6th of May, we have two shorts, and the bottom short, GSX, has stopped out. So you can see a little trend here, right? As a trend follower, you should be able to see some trends. Our shorts are beginning to stop out. But look at what's happening down in the new positions, or potential new positions. We're beginning to see buy side setups. Now, on the 11th, you can see we now have two buy side setups, and we've got a, we have that one little lonely short, which is actually looking pretty good, left in the portfolio. Now we go to May 21st. What's happening? Well, we have another buy setting up and another long triggering. And then we fast forward to the 27th and our short stopped out and we have a plethora of buy signals, three buy signals and zero shorts. Somebody asked me, Dave, you seem so bearish. Why are you bullish now? It's like, because the market's going up. I know. It's hard for me to sometimes wrap my head around that, too, when the whole world is <laughs> under global pandemic and there's blood in the streets and everything else is going on, right? So we fast forward to the third, and you can see the portfolio is all longs, three longs, and we have two more potential buys setting up. And by the way, if you want to, I know you want to, I know you probably want to party with me, but if you want to just check these things out, warts and all, go to DaveLander.com slash archives. And these are all screen captures from my daily video. So you can watch the ebb and flow in the portfolio if you can't sleep at night. But I really think it's exciting stuff, but I, I know I'm a nerd. Okay, so on the 15th, all right, let's just get through all this so we can learn some lessons, right? So on the 15th, we have a plethora. Look at that. One, two, three, four buys. I sound like, I sound like Tiny Elvis. Look, look at those buys. It's huge. It's a bunch of buys down there. <laughs> and in the portfolio, we have two of our longs hit the initial profit target. So now we're free rolling, a uh, term I borrow from Char Charlie Kirk, and that's what he calls my money management when you hit the initial profit target. Because the worst that could happen, barring overnight gaps, of course, is that you break even and now you have a free position and you can let it ride. And hopefully, I know you should never use the word hope in this business, but hopefully it turns to a big winner. Now the 24th, even though the market had been going up, we lost money on MR, but we did hit two more initial profit targets and I am still long both of those stocks right now in a free rolling type of situation. So what does all this mean? What have we learned? Well, if you can't be in the trend you love, love the trend you're in. Here's the deal. Shorts are a pain in the buttocks. You have to borrow stock, and sometimes you can't borrow stock. Sometimes it's not available. So then you got to look at the options market, provided that it's optionable, and then you got decay in options, and that's a whole other can of worms there. Real pain in the butt. You also are somewhat limited in how much money you can make because a short can only go to zero, so you can only make 100% return. And there's some things that you can maybe do in between, such as put a little bit on and off, take a little on and off, swing trade around the core position. But for the most part, shorting is just a pain in the butt. The retrace rallies suck, to put it mildly, okay? But if you can't be in a trend you love, love the trend 
you're in. I thought it was really cool as it unfolded. I, I wish the market would just go up because a lot of people are getting hurt when that market slides. And, and you know what? My long positions were getting creamed too. So initially, I, I feel your pain. It was a lot of pain coming into that big slide. Here's a biggie. Believe in what you see and not in what you believe. When I saw the market begin to implode, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the real deal. The market thinks that everybody in the world is going to die. This is major, major pandemic. This is not a good thing. And then as it began to unfold, I'm like, wow, this market will never go up again. We're going to be in a really, really, really ugly market for a long time. The biggest lesson here is to trust in your database. It will speak and it pays to listen. Now, this time, because the market, I think, was hit a little bit out of the blue with this pandemic thing, it didn't work quite as well as it used to or as it, as it has before in the past. For instance, in 2007, around October or so, I started apologizing to my clients because the market was hitting brand new highs and I couldn't find a long side setup to save my life. Go in and look at those leftover shorts from last fall and you could see the market was getting a little iffy back in, back then, and that's why we had a couple of shorts on. But for the most part, in 2007, I couldn't find a long to save my life, apologized to my clients, we started shorting, and lo and behold, the market rolled over and paid off nicely. But if you listen to your database, it will speak. And although it was a little slow to catch up this time, again, because the, the move was so abrupt, once we had that set up in the overall market, the bow tie down, the first thrust down, and then uh, about a week before that, we had the TFM 10% system triggering a sell signal. Then we had setups, and we didn't have any long side setups, and we had only short side setups. Now, op giving up those open profits sucks, and I, and I hope I didn't make it sound like, oh, it's just really easy here, because when you're living through it, it's not. You're watching those open profits erode, and you're waiting for some shorts to set up, and then you finally get those shorts, and the shorts start making money, but you're losing your butt on your open profits. It, it's, it's a little tough thing to go through, but you have to, as a trend follower, wrap your head around the fact that you're going to give up money trend following. In fact, you're going to spend most of your time or the majority of your time, I should say, less wealthy, and then all of a sudden the market takes off, and then you make a lot of money, and then you give back a lot of those profits, and then the market takes off, and then you give back a lot of those profits, give, rinse, and repeat. Mike Moody was giving a presentation once on momentum, and I raised my hand and, and discussed some of these problems that I occasionally talk about in here. And one of the things I asked about was that, hey, momentum gets whacked, it, it works great, until they don't, you know, it gets whacked here and there. And if I could ever solve for that, you'd never see my fat arse again. And Mike Moody's kind of laid back kind of guy, and he's like, well, Dave, if you're going to have a baby, babies are great, don't get me wrong. And I, have, I had some babies, but if you have a baby, you're going to have a lot of baby poop. So open profit drawdowns comes with the territory, like a baby and baby t baby poop. Now, it was kind of interesting in the Turtle book by Curtis Faith. That's the only one I read. And I, and I wasn't going to read any of them. And then Larry McMillan suggested I read this one. And it was definitely worth the read. And I would encourage you to read it too. It's the way of the turtle. Anyway, in the book, he said that... Dennis knew that giving up open profits was part of the game, and he really didn't chastise the traders if they had on positions and they had to give up some of those open profits going through that open profit drawdown. It, it still sucks, but you could wrap your head around the fact that it comes with the territory. And I'll get into more on that when we get back to trading psychology. The big lesson here is let the ebb and flow control your portfolio. So number one, you want to be setup driven. So if you can't find any longs, then you need to be shorting. And of course, look at the overall market. If it's set up as a short itself, or if it's a beginning to implode, you better start keeping an eye out for shorts. But the good thing is the database will start producing more and more shorts. And 
it won't produce any longs. And just as the market bottomed, it started producing long side setups. Now, if you go back and look at that curve, one thing I wanted to point out, the curve of the shorts to longs, net short and net long, that I drew on top of the chart, you'll notice that it's offset to the right. And the reason that is, is because with trend following, you're going to have a little bit of lag. In order to follow a trend, you must first have a trend to follow. So you will be a little late to the party and you will overstay your welcome and get a little bit of a hangover. Now, the ebb and flow controls your portfolio through money management too. So your initial profit targets allow you to take profits if that's all the market is offering. As you notice in one of those shorts, we only made the 750 bucks on that AMD trade and it scratched out on the remainder. And that's all the market was offering on that because the trend was turning at the time. But it'll keep you in a free position, so to speak, free rolling, as I just said, if the market offers much more. If that second loaf of the trade turns into a trend trade. So by now you're probably thinking, okay, Dave, that was then, this is now. What about the rest of the year? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, you know what, Dave, if you can't be in the trend you love, love the trend you're in. You need to believe in what you see and not in what you believe. There's blood in the streets, literally, okay? But the market is going up. What is is if my database gives me mostly longs i'm going to keep going long as i have been lately if i have to give us some open profits yeah i might drop an f-bomb but you know what it comes with the territory like poop in a baby and then i'm gonna let the ebb and flow control my portfolio again I'm listen to the database stops are going to take me out of the stinkers when the trend may be coming to the end coming to an end and it's going to keep me in the positions that could turn into longer term moves well i want to thank everybody for watching if you need some follow-up information davelander.com slash contact if you want the slides from this show and all the other shows go to davelander.com slash stock charts so thanks again for watching and may the trend be with you hey grayson rose here with stock charts thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that video if you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.